Previously, we talked about direct variation when the graph was a linear relation that crossed through the uh, y-intercept at zero. Um, the y-axis at zero, the initial value was zero. Uh, in this case, we're going to be looking at partial variation. So it's very similar. Um, but the y dependent variable equals the x variable, the independent variable. I believe there's a missing bracket right there. Uh, times a constant number. So that's the same definition as direct variation. But then we also add a constant number. So if we take a look here, here's our new formula, y equals mx plus b. And again, your uh, textbook likes to do things a little bit differently uh, and call the m a k. Uh, it's in a different order in some of the examples. It's the uh, b plus mx, but it doesn't matter which order you put them in. The idea is that the constant multiple, the number with the x being multiplied, that's our rate of change, our slope, uh, and then that's our constant value or our initial value. So our initial value here is b. Whatever we add there, that's going to be our initial value. That's where we're going to cross the y-axis. Um, so that's the only difference between partial and direct variation is where the graph crosses the y-axis. Partial variation is going to cross uh, at a value other than zero. And then direct variation crosses at zero. Um, so here's an example. We got Sophia investing $1,000 and making $50 in interest each year. We're going to use a table of values to uh, graph the investment over the first four years. So year zero, she's got $1,000 in there. After one year, she's made $50 in interest, so $1,050. After two years, she makes another $50 in interest. After three years, she makes another $50 in interest. And after four years, she makes another $50 in interest. We just keep adding 50 each time. That is our constant rate of change. She's making $50 a year. So again, uh, I have a broken graph here. That's the little Z uh, cut through the graph. Um, and then I'll graph all these points. So we got 0 and 1,000, 1 and 1,050. 2 and 1,100, 3, 1,150, and 4, 1,200. So I plot my points there, and they all line up neatly in a nice pretty line. So the difference here is that the initial value is not at 0. So it's partial variation. It's a line that does not go through 0. So it's partial variation. The initial value here is at 1,000. And our rate of change, every time it goes up by 1, it goes over by, every time it goes over by 1, it goes up by 50. So our rate of change, rise 50, run 1, or just $50. There's our rate of change. Um, we want to write an equation for this relation. So if we look at that, we have our formula in general is y equals mx plus b. Well, our rate of change we said was 50. So y equals 50x. And then our initial value is 1,000, so plus 1,000. To note, if it was a negative initial value, if it was initial value at negative 10, we would put minus 10 as our initial value. But in this case, it was 1,000. Um, how much will the investment be worth after 10 years? Well, now we can use that formula and plug in 10 years. The x values represented our number of years. So y equals 50 times 10 plus 1,000. 50 times 10 is 500. Add 1,000 to that, and we will get 1,500. So in 10 years, her investment will be worth $1,500. And there you are. Um, we can also make the equation given a table. So we've made it using the graph. We can also make it using a table. Uh, if we look at this table, first thing we can look at is, is this direct or partial variation? Well, here's our x value of 0, and it crosses the x at the y-axis at 12.5. So this is not direct variation. This is partial variation. And spell that correctly. Partial. Uh, 
what is the fixed value? So that fixed value, that initial value, where does it start at? Um, 12.5. So our initial value, our fixed value is at 12.5. And then the rate of change, well, we can look here and see it's going up by 2.5 each time. 22 minus 20 is 2.5. 20 minus 17.5 is 2.5. So it's going up by 2.5. So our rate of change is 2.5. So we want to write now the equation. Y equals mx plus b is our general form. So our y equals the rate of change, 2.5x plus 12.5. And we can test that out quickly. Uh, at 2, we should get 17.5 as the y value. So 2 times 2.5 is 5. 5 plus 12.5 is 17.5. That does work out. So you can get the initial value and rate of change from the table, or you can get it from a graph. The difference between partial variation and direct variation is simply the plus b at the end. They were adding a value at the end. Otherwise, direct variation is 0. Partial variation, add the value.